everybody i apologize for the bad quality of audio in terms of my voice um i am currently at work right now i have some time before i have to go out and do some actual work so i figured why not pull out my macbook and create a video so basically with this video this is kind of just explaining my techniques this specific project right here I labeled spooky video game music because that's initially what I wanted to create. However, it didn't go that way. It turned more of into a, a rap beat, essentially, or hip-hop beat. Um, so, yeah, basically, without further ado, um, this is very bare bones as you can see there's not a lot of layers to it it's not even technically finished but i just wanted to kind of go forth and give you guys an insight into how i create music so oh sorry about that so basically uh going into the first aspect of this i wanted to show you how i start off any song and I'm sure this is the same approach many many people use maybe not everybody but most people use they start off with like a specific instrument and then they kind of doodle with it or whatever and then they come up with an idea or they hear it in their head I don't have the ability to hear it in my head I have like an aphantasia thing going on where like I, I have like no I have like mind blindness essentially where I can't really see uh, or anything like that like images in my head i have no vivid imagery and that kind of translated a little bit to um voices in my head and stuff like that like hearing like a voice in my head i don't hear my own voice in my head um i have no internal monologue essentially so like a lot of the things that i do i speak out loud in order to kind of think through problems um but anyway without further ado um if you hear this shifting this going around it's because the microphone is on my chest and it's touching my beard and it's scraping up and down my beard so i apologize but yeah i found this piano it's a preset everything in here is a preset um again this was just a very quick thing that i wanted to show you guys um and i was in disney world when i started making this so i didn't really have enough time to go real in depth and try to make something custom using the sense so but this one is a preset, and this is what it sounds like along. I'm going to mute myself. Yeah, so very, very, very bare bones there. But ultimately... Oh, okay, there we go. So yeah, if you look at the MIDI information here, you will see um, basically it is a chord. It's kind of arpeggiated, but it is a chord. Um, and it's not, well, it's, I guess it's arpeggiation, but essentially I just took a chord and I separated it into notes, but I let the note before it ring through, so that way it does create a chord when the triad completes so basically that's just repeated throughout the whole entire thing that is the baseline that is essentially what is the the, the, the melody i guess um but yeah from there um moving on i had to add some actual chords behind it so i went through i found this i thought it sounded pretty good with uh the actual uh, thing like the piano here and that's what this sounds like so I'm gonna mute my mic hold on so it's very organ sounding um, but when you listen to those together, it makes total sense as to why I put them together. So here we go. Yeah. 
So yeah, as you hear them together, they sound good together, they work very well together. So basically, with that being said, um, I just used the AI drummer here within Logic. Um, I believe I used like the song, I don't remember, hold on. Um, not the right one, that's the one. Yeah, I used Anton, which is the modern hip hop guy. Um, and the cool thing about this specific little guy right here is you actually do have some degree of control. So you have some presets here for drums and samples, but you also have the ability to go loud, complex, um, or simple loud and simple soft, complex and soft, or any variation in between. You also have individual controls of which elements of the percussion the cymbals and uh, other rhythmic things like shakers and stuff here. Um, and then you have the kick, snare, and claps. And you can even have a follow, which allows you to actually, if I clicked on this, it allows you to pick a specific thing it wants to follow. It does change things, so that's why I don't use it unless I really want it to follow something in particular. You can control how many uh, fills are in this specific thing, some swing, whether it's eight note swing or 16th note swing. Um, I don't have any swing on this because I'm a pretty precise individual. You can put a humanize option on there so that way it automatically, quote unquote, intelligently um, messes with the velocity of each note and the complexity range of each individual element that you have within your percussion or drums. So. It's pretty cool, you have some flexibility there. And everyone's like, oh, well, do you have to use those specific uh, uh, samples? No, you can go into DMD itself and then swap out individual samples. So you can use your own samples if you want. Pretty convenient, huh? But anyway, without further ado, I decided, hey, I'm gonna create some ambience or something. So I ended up finding a pad called Beyond Deep Skies. I thought it worked okay with everything. So yeah, that's this is this is the uh since it worked okay with everything, I, this is kind of what I did with it. But yeah, since that worked out, you know, I do have the drums here. And the drums here sound like this. I'm gonna mute myself real quick so you don't have to hear that static. Again, nothing complex, sounds good enough. Now, when I use the drummer, I then go forth and I'm like, okay, I need some bass, I need some bass. So ultimately, I did not find a preset that I liked within Logic, um, though there are many for subs and bass in general. Um, but I do have something that I bought years ago called Track God, um, and it's basically uh, like samples and like different sounds. Um, it's, a, it's pretty much a synth within itself. And you have control over these presets. So you can use the ADSR in here as an envelope. So uh, you can change things. You have some degree control in there, which is pretty cool. But ultimately, that specific sub sounds like this. Nothing particularly difficult, very simple, following the roots. Um, this is kind of just setting the stage for what everything's doing, and all that together sounds like this.
as you can see, I'm being pretty mindful as well about the overall levels. I'm not trying to go anywhere past negative six on here just because of the fact that when I add any form of mastering or effects, I might get some volume increases. Um, and yeah, don't want that to interfere and make it too loud so that way it makes mastering a bitch. But anyway, um, ultimately from there, I was like, okay, well, what do I need to do? Well, I haven't done them yet in here, but basically what I envisioned was creating like a little break here and just keeping the subs and all the elements besides the drums uh, working and use the vocals or the rap or the singing or whatever that's going to go on there as kind of like a building block as an instrumentation within it uh, to carry it on into the actual quote-unquote chorus. So this is just a little break area that I used. Um, I tend to kind of take like a Maynard approach from the band Tool, if you don't know who they are. Uh, Maynard in Tool specifically states that he likes to use his voice as an instrument rather than a centerpiece and something that is the focal point of the music. He doesn't want his vocals to be the focal point. He wants his vocals to be part of the instrumentation. So that ideology I kind of adopted into my own production methods because that's just something I really connected with. Everyone has their own specific um, philosophy and approach to everything and this is just my own and it's adopted but by other people as well so yeah without further ado that just sounds like this And what I wanted to do for the chorus was I wanted to change it up a little bit. I wanted to maybe add some new stuff, um, kind of make it more exciting, make it move a little bit more. So for the sub bass here, um, I actually had it do a little something different to make some movement in the low end. So here's, here's that. So yeah, very basic, nothing too complicated. For the drums, I made it go all the way loud and complex. I added a new a percussion element. I changed the fill amount just a smidge. I kept the human, uh, humanization option the same, but I did decrease the complexity because it was a little bit higher beforehand um, of the like bongo, congo things, congos or whatever they are. Um, but basically, more or less, you know, that ended up transpiring into me going, okay, well, I need some type of other element to create something new. It doesn't sound fresh enough. It sounds repetitive. So what I did was I end this detunchi, I guess you would call it. It's like a piano thing. Um, it's, again, using Track God. Um, but this detunchi is just called the basic stage B piano, or B piano basic stage. Um, and... It sounds like this alone. But yeah, ultimately together that just, it, it all sounds pretty cohesive once you listen to everything all together. So I'm going to do that for you guys right now.
And basically, um, I created another break just to kind of add a transitionary period, maybe start some wrapping here that's different from everything else. And then it just goes back into this guy. And then it's just going to repeat for a little bit. And then eventually I would create a bridge. And how I create a bridge essentially is by taking the actual chords that I used and I either transpose them to another key that is easily trans posable back to the original key so that way it transitions effectively or I ultimately add a diminished chord to it to kind of add some tension um, that's different from the main uh, chords used throughout the progression so basically adding a dimension adds this tension to it that I can then use to return back to the main chords which kind of is like a you know, you feel at home and then all of a sudden you leave and you want to really go home again, but you can't because you're out with your friends, everyone's drunk, you're at a club, um, but you're not having a good time. However, you don't want to disappoint your friends. So you're kind of in this little tension within yourself. And then all of a sudden when you finally return home, everything feels complete again. So it's kind of something like that using an analogy. I don't know if it's a good analogy, but I mean, <laughs> essentially that's just kind of how I decided to explain that I guess but uh, essentially if you know anything about music theory whatsoever that's just kind of a basic principle um, but yeah ultimately when listening to this um, you know and, and creating it in the moment when I was doing everything I actually do my leveling at the same time as everything else so if I am creating a song um, instead of just leaving it all at that levels that they're at i level it as i'm going in as well as gain staging obviously this is digital so it's a little bit easier to gain stage because you get to gain stage directly within the actual sense um so that way they're not clipping and if you're using presets a lot of times they don't clip because they are meant to be used as is um, I just uh, change volumes because I don't want anything to be too loud. I don't want anything to jump out. And if there is things that jump out, I will use some cr compression to kind of back that off. Um, but ultimately, um, as you can see here, I have some reverbs that I added onto the stage piano as well as the hip roads thing. Um, I use the chroma here and then I just use a preset I kind of adjusted this a little bit but not by much it's pretty much the same preset and then I used space designer on the hip roads and then used a hotel entrance because I really wanted it to sound wide and enlarge and having a lot of space so yeah that sounds like this together So you can see is it's kind of subtle, but it does add some more space in the background. I didn't want it to be so enveloping that it sounded like a whole new sound. I mean, if that's something that you're into, go right for it. There's no real rules. You just need to know the basic ones so that way you know how to break them. Um, but ultimately, I just wanted to add a little bit of space within those two synths so that way it doesn't sound so centered or monoed or whatever the case may be. So I just wanted to add a little bit of space. Um, and then as I was listening to it, I was like, oh my God, the kick isn't kicking as hard as it should be. So ultimately, with that being said, this is where we get into the fun part, side chain compression. So basically this is very rudimentary. This is nothing, I did not go into depth with mixing this or anything like that. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a new send, go to your buses, create an, em we'll go to an empty bus here. And once you go to your empty bus, go to your bass track. So on here it's labeled as sub. And then you're gonna insert a compressor. Once you insert the stock compressor specifically, you can hit the side chain up here and then search for that specific bus. It's six for me. In my particular case, turn your auto gain off, adjust your ratio and adjust your th uh, threshold. Make sure it's kind of a fast attack and release. I have auto on here just because it worked. It's not recommended to use auto, but for my case, it did work. 
um, it doesn't always work appropriately. Make sure that your makeup gain is zero so that way it doesn't make up. It continuously ducks. It doesn't make it leveled out again. You want it to duck the audio. So without further ado, when you listen to this all together with that compression on, with the side chaining, this is what effect it has on it. So here we go. As you could see, when it was hitting, it was only going to about negative four. I didn't want to drown the 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 track with kick and kind of make the bass less audible. Um, I just wanted the bass to get out of the way a little bit for whenever the kick reacts and, and does its thing and pushes that rhythmic element. I just wanted to kind of have it react and push it down a little bit so that way it's a little bit more felt in the low end because this, it's a sub. A sub has a lot of sub information, a lot of low end information and you know kicks generally have a lot of low information so bass slash sub takes up the same exact frequency spectrum as most kicks so you got to kind of carve some room out in the EQ as well as you know evidently make some room using a side chain. Ultimately, I didn't feel like the sub hit hard enough, but it was at a good level. So I just wanted to add some distortion. I ended up using preamp, I mean, uh, not a preamp, um, a preset for this, and then I just adjusted the settings to taste. Um, I used bass amp because it added some well-needed tonality to the sub. So here's that. And as you could see earlier, I just didn't clear this, but it's a good good thing that it's kind of on here because I wanted to touch base on this. This linear EQ is actually going to be used for me to separate both the high and low information so I could process the high and mid range, range information separately from the low end. However, when I did do that initially, um, there wasn't a whole lot of mid range and high end information in the sub. There was just a little bit of a rattle to kind of sorry, to kind of make it a little bit more audible. Um, so ultimately I just decided to distort it. And when I distorted it, it made it fatter sounding and ugly things. So that's just kind of how I went about it. Um, ultimately, these are kind of automatically on here. You can choose to leave them on if they sound good, but generally I like to do everything separately. Um, with the channel EQ, it's a user default, which means I did it. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit of a uh, fail safe in the low end as well as bump a little bit around the 100 hertz range to make the kick a little bit more umphy in smaller speakers. So here's that. One second, let me just mute myself. This is kind of a pain in the ass, but anyway. <laughs> I hope you guys were able to hear that, but basically it added a little bit of 100 hertz oomph, so that way like smaller speakers will have an easier time translating that kick uh, heftiness 
Um, I, as you can see when I actually did it, I didn't boost it a lot, and that's because I'm a fan of small incremental changes um, and then using more incremental changes so that way it prevents more problems later on. Like, if I just boosted the shit out of this at, like, you know, I only did a 3 dB boost, which is just on the cusp of being audible to normal people, but, like, if I were to do this, like, by, like, 6... You know, let's, let's hear how that sounds really quickly. Let's just experiment a little bit. So six is right here. We have it at six now. And then you can see how much, it, how quickly things can take uh, a turn when it, come, uh, when it comes to the balance of your total track. So let me mute myself and we'll go back into that and we'll experiment. So the reason why I didn't go forth with that, I don't know if you guys could hear it, but basically when I added 6 dB and doubled the 3 dB, what happened was it made the bass, in my opinion, well not the bass, but the, the kick, in my opinion, a little too uh, muffled in that 100 hertz range. So it started to sound like a little bit of a, like it was muddying it just a smidge. Um, so I didn't really want that to happen what I wanted to do is I just wanted it to have a little bit more oomph in speakers. So I like to do, like I said, small incremental changes. And that small incremental change was initially what creates a little bit more uh, oomph and I can have more control over it rather than, you know, just doing a 6 dB to boost and then later on feel like realizing that it's too much and then having to you know, go back to the drawing board or even adding a new EQ in the boost stage after I'm done adding a compressor, etc. So yeah, I, it just was something that I just didn't want to do. Also, if you noticed on the e-piano here, the stage uh, piano, I did add an amplifier. And I did that as a, one, artistic choice, and two, I wanted to add some harmonics and stuff that weren't present to begin with. So what better way to do that than by amplifying it? So... Yeah, here we go. As you can hear, it added a little bit more body. It felt a little bit more up front. And sure, I probably could have, you know, did that with EQs and maybe a little bit of compression. But, like, ultimately, there's just, you know, in real life, when you play a show and you play your piano, you generally mic up your piano. Or if you're using, like, a grand or something like that, or, like, an upright piano. But if you're using a keyboard or a synth you'd be pushing it through an amplifier of some sort. And when you're practicing with your band or whatever, you're also going to push a synth through an amplifier of some sort. So I just kind of wanted to use like a clean-ish, that's why I use the Tweed uh, amp, to kind of just add a little bit more body and a little bit of the amp's characteristics to it to make it seem like it's more realistic. I didn't want to make it seem unrealistic or something unachievable through rudimentary means. So that's just kind of what I did, and that's just kind of how it worked. But anyway, though, I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's any questions that you may have, feel free to message me personally or comment on this video. Whatever you need, whatever you want, I'm there to help you. Uh, my name is Zachary Neff, and I am the owner and founder of Neff Audio Productions. I also have a degree from Los Angeles Film School in music production, so there is my credentials. I've been doing this for over 10 years, uh, mixing for about 12. So here you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you.